Andrew, what's the big issue at Casino? What's happened to you, man? Did you get spiked at the Bergheim? Did you get GHB? Did you get roofied? Did a nice, handsome Italian man try to take advantage of you in a dark room? No, none. None of that happened. Well, it might have happened, but you know, you know what I mean. None of that happened, right? <laughs> Instead, I end up being one of the lucky, unluckiest people in the world. End up contracting some form of um, tonsillitis called um, Jinzi or Jinzi or Junzi or something along that kind of lines, right? Kind of, you know, similar to Juju, whatever it may be some rare form of flipping tonsillitis that basically affected one of my tonsils at the back inflamed to the point where it had to be um or the pus inside of it had to be excreted from a needle then that didn't work then they had to slit it open with a flipping you know blade and that was incredibly painful and now i'm on a crazy dose of flipping antibiotics and you know all sorts of other drugs in order to get me back on the mend i'm in a far better space now the last couple of weeks or so i was unable to swallow so you know having the medicine and taking ibuprofen and penicillin and antibiotics and whatever else i had to take was very difficult to do and it wouldn't lead me to the point of tears but now i can at least swallow which is great but i can't open my mouth too wide so if you're hearing my mouth and you're hearing my overall speech a little bit muddy a little bit marbled you know kind of akin to like a brendan shaw but like i've got marbles in my mouth or like i'm eating a you know you know, like I'm constantly eating whilst I'm talking. I'm not, I promise. I know I usually sound a bit mad anyway, but this is definitely because of my tonsil. So that's been a bit of an issue. Hopefully in the future, this doesn't happen again um, because the pain has been, you know, crazy. I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy, but it has been an eye-opening experience because I've essentially, I've been without my voice, which is, I feel like is one of my um, strongest tools <laughs> in my arsenal. I'm not very good at mental arithmetic. Um, I probably have undiagnosed ADHD, so my attention span is the greatest. So I think my best tool that I have is maybe my height and my speed, considering how big I am. I'm quite fast. I think that's a pretty good asset. I don't look fast, but I am. And then, of course, my ability to speak, because I can get me in trouble, out of trouble, in a job, out of a job. You know what I mean? It's a good thing. So the fact I didn't have it for the last what week and a half or something has been pretty brutal i'm not going to lie so it has given me a somewhat level of appreciation for my ability to speak and stuff it's also made me be a way more conscious of how i treat of how i look after myself overall um i don't think i did anything stupid when i went to berlin i'm pretty sure i didn't i stayed in a pretty decent airbnb i showered every single day if not twice a day because it was so warm over there and i was going out obviously to these crazy parties so the last thing i could do was to go home and shower and of course i'm not at that age where like i'm staying up for three days in a row i at least go home shower sleep and then come back out again or have a bite to eat or something i took i took outfits for the day i washed my hands everywhere i went um i wore a mask on the public transport you know i did all the things i meant to be meant to have done but I guess maybe I was just unlucky in general. I'm not really too sure. But in general, you know, going to a place like Berkeley or going to any sort of major nightclub or major metropolitan city is pretty impossible to kind of um, protect yourself from all levels of bacteria floating around in the air. It's just impossible to do so. I did my best and obviously that didn't work. Um, maybe it happened after I came back. I don't really know. I'm not really sure how it happened or how it occurred. But I'm glad I've got some idea of what it was because one of the worst things about being ill is when you don't know what it is. And also, when you're ill, I feel like, I've said it plenty of times, I would much rather take an open wound, a broken arm or something, um, over an internal organ thing that you can't actually see. It just hurts way more because you don't know where the pain's coming from. Because before, when I was in pain um, from this tonsillitis thing that I have, it's basically a form of tonsillitis, I was getting pains in my kidneys as well. That was really strange. I was getting really sharp pains in my kidneys. I was thinking, oh my God, no way do I have kidney stones too. Um... I was getting delirious. I was being dizzy. I couldn't sleep on my on on a certain side. Um, I couldn't swallow my own saliva, so I had to spit it all in a cup. I know it's disgusting to say, but do you know what I mean like my throat was that kind of closed and stuff. It was just awful, 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 awful. Um, and yeah, those things you don't really know what what's happening to you, right? And it's really weird to kind of get around it. But you know, luckily we've got the NHS here in the UK, free healthcare, which is great. But the other side of it, which is awful, is that essentially it's the service is just diabolical. You get to see somebody, obviously, you get some sort of resolution. You get medication, obviously, that I have to pay for. Don't get me wrong. But still, um, the, you know, the looking after the thing, the transport between the hospitals, all that sort of good stuff, the, you know, being looked after by a whole bevy of like highly, highly 
you know, proficient nurses and doctors and surgeons is great, but the overall care in between is just a disaster class. And I have real sympathy for people that work there, like, because the emergency room that I was in was just, it was like a war zone, man, legitimately like a war zone. There was kids that run into door frames, guys who had clearly been on the piss all night, a person who reacted really terribly to some sunscreen on their feet, and their feet looked like literally elephant man, like an elephant's foot, sorry, in terms of swelling up. And it was a really petite, like, you know, Mediterranean type looking girl. And her feet were super inflamed, covered in boils all over the place. I don't know what happened there. Um, a lady who kept reacting really poorly to whatever painkiller or whatever they were giving her in the drip. She started shaking and convulsing. That was pretty scary to watch in real time. It's a really, um, it's a really kind of sad place to be legitimately is and these doctors and nurses have always got somewhat of a cheery disposition on and i know some of it must be they're kind of dead behind the eyes they have to kind of just like you know power through but their ability to just keep going and going and going and answering the same old questions there's this other weird older dude who i don't know what was wrong with him but he just kept ranting and raving about wanting a sandwich for like an hour like i want a sandwich cheese sandwich or salmon and they kept repeating the same thing to him we've ordered a few is coming we've ordered a few is coming he just wouldn't wait and then said i want a drink so we've got water over there he's like, i don't like water i want something else which clearly you know he was we wanted him to he wanted them to them to pour him out a pint or something but it was just a bizarre place to be it really really was a strange place to be i'm not going to lie um and um yeah it's i understand why people don't like going to hospitals i really do get it because it's fucking crazy but I am thankful that we have the NHS. I am thankful that I'm able to see somebody fairly sharpish in terms of getting um, treatment and whatnot. Um, and yeah, I was able to get, I was able to be in and out of there within like what a couple of days. I had to stay over the night because obviously um, I had some form of surgery done. It wasn't really because I wasn't under anesthesia or anything. They sprayed the back of my tonsils with numbing spray and then slay opened. The syringe was gnarly though. The syringe was gnarly. Placing a syringe in my tonsils and then trying to extract whatever pus was in there out was gnarly because it didn't work. He did it twice. <laughs> it didn't work, right? <laughs> it was brutal because I could feel it po poking in there, like trying to, oh, disgusting. And I could see a little bit of it in the needle, but it wasn't enough because I guess it was just forming. And then the second surgeon came and he was like, oh, I suggest if you want to go home sooner and you want to recover quicker, that I should just slit it. And he just did like a. I think he did like a cross mark, I think, if I'm not mistaken, to kind of get the pass out. But the thing was that was really weird and that I didn't even understand, there was no extraction. I remember when I got my um, no, no nasal polyps taken out, right? I had these things because like, of my A fever and whatever it may be. My, persp my, my respiration was affected that way from a long time ago. I remember when I got that done, they had this sort of suction thing they'd use, this little, what, this little plastic tube that they'd kind of suck out all the skunk whatever they did none of that so i had to basically just cough it all out it was just ugh, honestly it was gnarly man it was fucking gnarly but anyway i'm back now um sounding better than ever i hope <laughs> but yeah big up everyone that's been chilling big up everyone that's been you know, messaging me and sending me some what you call it well wishes i do appreciate you all um i did a bit of a troll because i made it seem like i was something way more serious and i had got you know i i, I flipping had a drug over this or something but you know it's fun to troll it's fun to lie <laughs> it's fun to exaggerate things a little bit so please let me have some fun and don't be too angry at me i'm okay i'm okay i'm okay 